Hi, it's Jan Beta, and today we are going to turn the Amiga 1200 board that I repaired in the previous video into a full Amiga 1200 with a keyboard, with a case, with a disk drive or a GoTag, with a CF card or a hard disk and maybe some other stuff that I'm going to make up as I go along. So hopefully this is going to be a more laid back episode, just turning this into a beautiful Amiga 1200 again. Yeah, the board still works fine. I added some dabs of hot glue for the capacitors that were like dangling a bit in the breeze. And I added a CF card for now from my old Amiga and yeah, it works beautifully as a hard disk. The mouse is not very responsive, but that's due to the mouse not being very responsive. It's the mouse, not the Amiga. I'm going to dig through my stash of Amiga parts and I think I have enough parts from other projects that I can use to make this into a full Amiga 1200. Let's see. There's going to be some work required because many of these pieces are in rather not so great shape, but we're going to get through it and in the end hopefully we're going to have a beautiful, as good as new, nearly Amiga 1200. Yeah, this is the, the state of the board, basically nothing changed except for I added some dabs of hot glue to the electrolytic through-hole capacitors here to make them more stable because some of them are just hanging on by some botch wires. As you've maybe seen in the last video, this seems to still work perfectly. I also added my CF card here on top, uh, which is just one of these little adapters and a 4 gigabyte CF card added to the IDE port here. Yeah, other than that, nothing has changed. We're going to find some case parts for this now. So for the case, this is my original Amiga 1200 case that I retrobrighted, I think in 2016 or thereabouts. It was super, super yellow, like a cheddar cheese colored, and it still looks better than it was, but it has re-yellowed quite significantly, so we are going to do some retrobrighting. And unfortunately, there's a little crack in here, so it's not that major, but uh, these cooling fins here cracked a tiny little bit. So we're going to have to repair that and glue that back together, I think, to not risk damaging this any further. I also have uh, the LED assembly, but that's separate. We're going to put that in. Of course, I have uh, the keyboard from this case as well, because I replaced my keyboard with a uh, mechanical keyboard. This is the bottom shielding that our Amiga board came with. We're going to use that. I also have the top shielding from my original Amiga, but I don't think I want that in there at all. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see about that. I have this <laughs> very wonky floppy disk drive that is super dirty, so we're going to have to do some work on that. This is from another Amiga 1200 that I've briefly shown in the previous video. That's an ongoing restoration repair thing. That one was in a flooded basement, as some other machines you've seen me refurbish on this channel. So this has seen a lot of dirty, muddy water. We're going to see if we can resurrect this. Yeah, keyboard I'm going to have to dig up as well. So here's my original Amiga 1200 keyboard. And below <laughs> there's the uh, very dirty Amiga 1200 from the flooded basement keyboard. Blah. Which is also missing the base plate that I used for the mechanical keyboard. But we're going to use this and uh, it's not severely re-yellowed, but it is a bit re-yellowed. It kind of matches the case. But given the state it was in when I first dug it out of uh, my sister's attic actually, this looks pretty good still after nearly a decade of when I first retrobrighted it. It looked super nice when I first did it, but yeah. Now it matches the re-yellowing of the case, kind of, and it's, it's a bit yellowed. So, yeah, let's do this, I guess. We need a lot of washing of parts and uh, gluing of parts. I'm going to start with repairing the case, I think. 
Yeah, so this is a minor crack that happened because I uh, something fell on the Amiga actually. The Amiga was unharmed except for this little chip in the case, uh, thankfully. So yeah, we're going to see if we can put some plastic glue on there and straighten it out slightly. I think that's the way to go. Just going to use a pair of pliers here. Maybe we're just using some super glue here. If we can straighten this out like this. Yeah, this is the part that we need to glue back together and it also cracked here. So it's not going to be perfect in the end, I think. Yeah, I think we can bend this like this and it's going to be hardly visible at all. So yeah, I'm trying to add the glue from the back, I think. Just going with some super glue, I think. I have some cyanoacrylate glue kicker here. And I'm just going to add a dab here and spray it after I hold it in place with these uh, pliers. That's going to be fun. I'm just going to add some here. And this should instantly cure now. Yep, it did. So yeah, that's probably all I want to do to this part. It is visible to some extent, but uh, it's an old case and it's original and I caused this crack, so it's going to be okay. Uh, I'm just going to give this a bit of a wash in the sink and then we're going to retrobrite this again. Re-retrobriting, I don't even know if this is possible, but it should be because it's just bleaching basically. So we should be able to bleach this back to its original look. And while I'm washing things, I'm also going to give this uh, floppy disk drive a good washing. If we can get this apart. I'm just going to take it in the sink. Nothing much to lose here. Let's see what this looks like from the inside. Oh, it's not that bad actually. Okay, it is pretty bad here. So we're going to at least put some water in there, I guess. And the rest of it maybe I'm going to clean with Q-tips and things like that. This cable also needs some water. And I'm going to rinse this with alcohol afterwards and clean everything by hand again. Maybe we can even make this work again. Not so sure. <laughs> I also want to give the keycaps another cleaning before I do the retro writing thing. So I'm just going to pull them all, uh, which I have to do anyway for retro writing. There are some, I don't know, spilled drink drops and things like that on here because I used this A1200 quite a bit while it had this keyboard in it, the original keyboard. Yeah, I'm going to pull all these again and wash them in some dish soap and then we're going to retro write this thing. So yeah, this is pretty boring, I guess. Just going to put all the plastic parts in one container and the metal parts like the springs in another container. We're going to see how re-retro writing, I've actually never done that before, how well that goes. If all fails, uh, there's still new keycaps and new cases available from a1200.net. But yeah, let's see what we can do with the parts that I have at hand here. Another option would be to use uh, Amiga 500 keycaps actually, because they fit these key stems perfectly, I think. Basically the same keyboard. I think I'm just going to leave the clips on here, the, the clips under the larger keys. I'm going to dust this off a little bit, but other than that, this keyboard should be in a good enough state. I already refurbished the whole thing and it worked beautifully. Oh, we lost the key stem there. That's not good. Yeah, uh, key stem just broke off. I was pretty careful, seemingly not careful enough. Let's see if we can get this out. Yep, there we go. That's our key stem. We're going to glue that back before we do anything else. It's the U. Yep, that's the way. We're just going to use super glue again, I think, because I already have that at hand. Of course, you want proper alignment there. This looks reasonable. Let's do some, the kicker thing. Rocket blaster. Actually works very well for quick repairs like this. Instantly kicks the cyanoacrylate glue. And uh, yeah, this should be stable now, I guess. Yep. So yeah, that's unfortunate. Let's just remember that our U 
is not super stable. Let me take a couple of seconds to thank the sponsor for this video, PCBWay, my favorite manufacturer of prototype PCBs of all kinds. They also do CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, 3D printing. They can populate your boards for you. Their pricing is super reasonable, delivery is fast, and they are friendly people to work with. So I highly recommend checking out the link in the video description. Back to our Amiga. Yeah, let's do the other ones. Let's see. Hopefully we don't break any others. With the keycap puller, the risk of breaking these is usually rather minimal, but yeah, as we've seen, things happen sometimes. I already washed the other parts, uh, like the disk drive and uh, the other case parts. I already washed in the background off camera because I don't think it's that interesting. I just used some soap and scrubbed them good. So this is just going to get a vacuum cleaner treatment and the keycaps are getting some soapy water. So I'm using this plug-in attachment for my regular vacuum cleaner to clean this. This is from a PC cleaning kit that has proven super useful. It has a hose here and a little brush and you can uh, like adjust the airflow with this little wheel here. So this is super useful for cleaning computers, even old ones. <laughs> so this is going to get loud because I'm turning the vacuum cleaner on, but uh, this should clean this up nicely. It's just surface dust on this one, basically. Yeah, looks pretty good to me, at least uh, good enough. The keycaps are currently soaking in some dish soap water and I'm going to clean each individual one with a toothbrush, uh, something I've done numerous times now and you can just watch some of my other videos uh, about that process. It's pretty tedious but very much worth it in the end because you want stuff to be super clean and free of any grease and things like that before you start retrobriting or you are going to run into uh, discoloration issues. So yeah, I'm going to clean everything up as well as I can and then I'm going to show you how I go about retrobriting these days as opposed to what I did in 2016 when I first did this to this machine or the case of this machine. The innards are in a new case. It's complicated. No, it isn't. <laughs> Keycaps are meticulously washed and cleaned. And of course, they're still yellow because that's just yellowing of the plastics and not dirt. Now I'm putting some gloves on, which is not easy because my hands are still a bit wet from washing the keycaps. Because now we're going to put some hydrogen peroxide solution on there, which in this case, I'm using Wasserstoffperoxid, which is hydrogen peroxide. 11.9% is the highest concentration of this stuff that's allowed to be sold uh, for cosmetics purposes and things like that, like bleaching hair and other stuff, cleaning things. Uh, this is basically just bleach and that's what it does to these keycaps, ideally. So I'm going to submerge these completely in bleach and uh, then I'm going to shine a grow light over them. And you don't want this stuff to get on your hands or clothing or anything like that, of course. So I'm just going to put the whole stuff in here. This can be reused a couple of times. I think I already used this bottle for some other retrobriting stuff. Put a lid on and then we're going to put it in my retro writing box, which I'm going to show you in a second. So for the case parts, I am going to use uh, this cream hydrogen peroxide, which is also 12%. This is used for hair bleaching generally. So uh, we're going to spread out some cling wrap. This is just regular cling wrap from my kitchen, actually. I'm just going to spread this on the table here and then we're going to wrap our Omega in there with the cream smeared on it. So I'm just going to put some on here which 
has proven quite a good thing to do. And then I'm just going to use a regular paintbrush to spread it a bit. And you want an even spread for this stuff, obviously. The more even you get it, the more even your results are going to be. You can also submerge the uh, cases completely, of course, which would give you an even better result, I guess. We are going to do it like this, though, because I don't have the means to do it any other way. So we're going to spread some on the case as well. Uh, you just want to basically paint this in this stuff. So get in all the little nicks and crevices on this case and try to spread it quite evenly here. And also on the sides because they are a bit yellowed. And you don't need a thick layer of this in my experience. Just want to cover all of it. This is quite nasty, of course. Just going to wrap it and we're going to use another bit of cling wrap from the back side here just to prevent the cream from evaporating too quickly. Just a nice wrap of this stuff. And then we're going to do the same for the bottom case. Hope I have enough cling wrap still. <laughs> there we go. Okay, that is nicely wrapped. The bottom is not that bad. It's not that badly yellowed, but we're still going to give it a bit of retro writing with the exact same method. And in my experience, the labels and things like that, you don't have to remove. They're just keeping up fine with this method. It's nothing to worry about. So this gets cling wrapped in here. Just putting another layer on here. Now it goes into my retro brighting box, which is just a cardboard box that I cladded in aluminum, aluminum foil, to reflect the light that we're going to shine on this. Um, it's mostly going to be the heat from the light that does the retro brighting. In my case, I have like a grow light that claims it's 300 watts or thereabout. I think that's the equivalent for if this was a incandescent grow light but it isn't, it's a, an LED uh, grow light. Of course, it's not taking 300 watts input at all, not even close. So yeah, I'm just going to put this in my retro writing box. Uh, see you in the kitchen when I explain that thing. So here's my retro writing box and I put everything in there. Just going to close it up and put my uh, grow light on top here and connect it up and turn it on and uh, yeah we're going to come in every half hour or so and massage the cream stuff around and uh, shake the keys a bit and then it takes several hours usually and we get a brighter plastic afterwards hopefully Ta -da, ta -da. so i'm going to set a timer for half an hour and then we're going to come back. So it's half an hour later and I'm going to show you this once. So this is already a bit heated up here. That's nice. And I'm just going to rearrange everything a bit. Shake this and smear the cream around. And then Give it another half an hour and repeat until we see some results, hopefully. I don't know if we are going to see results, but I'm just going to give this a shot for a couple of hours. And if everything else fails, we're going to have to live with a slightly yellow Amiga 1200 case. So it's a couple of days later actually, and uh, the case turned out a lot whiter than it was, although it's not quite back to its original color. It's still quite a bit of yellowing. It kind of resembles an Amiga 500 color, which is a bit beige than the A1200 originally, but I think I'm satisfied with the result. It's a, at least it's a lot better than it was, and uh, it's way, way better than it was when I got it, which was kind of the color of cheddar cheese. Same with the lower portion of the case. It still has some yellowing on this side here a bit, but it's okay. The keys uh, turned out okay as well. 
they are a bit brighter than they were, but uh, it doesn't go any further than that. I think uh, after eight hours or so of retro brighting, this is what we got and this is what I'm going to have to work with. So let's put things back together. And I'm going to start with the most tedious part, which is putting the keyboard back together. We need a little spring for each key and we need to push the keycap in. And I think you can already see that especially the dark gray keys are still a bit yellow, but they are a bit better. So this is what we got. So I'm going to do this for all the keys. I'm not going to bore you with any details. We're going to have to clip in these retaining clips here into the larger keys and the other ones just push in. We have two smaller springs for the space bar here and here. And this is just a regular size spring. So we need two smaller springs and one regular sized spring that is the exact same size as all the other springs. And then this should plug in here like so. The stem of the U key broke again, so I'm going to try to glue it again, this time using plastic glue, which is Uhu Plast Spezial, uh, which has worked in the past for me for repairs like this. It basically melts the plastic, basically it's acetone based, so it should probably glue this here, but it's going to have to cure for a while. So I put a little wire in there because there's a hole in the center of this uh, stem and in the hopes that this is going to be correctly aligned. Yeah, it looks like it should be good enough probably. We're going to see and maybe we are going to have to replace this key. Hmm, which would be a bummer of course. Sometimes these things break and the plastics are brittle and I suppose retro brighting doesn't make them any less brittle. Okay, continuing on with our scheduled program with the next key. <laughs> and all the other ones. Hopefully they won't break. Okay, that's pretty much everything back together except for the U key. Yeah, we're, we're going to have to see if that is salvageable or if we need a new key. As I said, this uh, keyboard fits the keys from the A500 as well. So uh, maybe there's a chance that we can just use one A500 key, which is going to have a slightly different color, but this is slightly yellowed. So maybe it's going to be a good match. I have no idea. Let's put some other stuff together while that cures, I guess. I think we can put the circuit board back into the bottom shielding at this point. I'm going to remove some of those uh, rust spots that are on here with the glass fiber pan before I do that. I think uh, it is in pretty good shape, but there's some rust spots around here. So I'm going to try to remove them. Yeah, that works rather well, actually. This is just a bit of surface rust, nothing to worry too much about, but yeah, it doesn't hurt to do some work on this, I guess. Just to make it a little bit shinier. <laughs> I'm not going to go berserk with the refurbishing work here just want to make it look reasonably nice and usable. Yeah, this works really well. So if you want to remove some tiny rust spots on RF shielding, the glass fiber pan is your friend. Fiberglass pan? Glass fiber pan? I don't know. I, I think you can say both. 
It's a pen made from glass fibers. <laughs> okay, just going to give this a wipe again with some window cleaner and then we can put this stuff back together. It looks a bit scratched now, of course, because I scratched it with the glass fiber pen. Don't forget the insulating sheet. Then this goes back in here. And then uh, we have these screws that go in the back here to hold it in place. Okay, into the case it goes, like so. Okay, and this is screwed down. And originally this screws through the top shielding so this is now in place. Originally there's a little clip that connects the bottom shielding to the top shielding on this screw, I believe, but I don't have that either. But we don't need it because I'm going to leave out the top casing anyway. This is a pretty important part, which I thankfully still have from my other Amiga 1200. This is the hard disk carriage and I think it goes in here something like this. I'm just going to take this sheet of plastic out of here I think. I just taped this clear piece of plastic in here with some electrical tape. That was just to insulate the CF card reader thing from this but I put some electrical tape around the uh, contacts on the CF card reader instead so that is going to insulate this from the circuit nicely. And we need this hole is for ventilation basically for the chips underneath so that it's definitely a good idea to keep that on there. This hard disk carriage thing is pretty vital for holding the keyboard in place that's why it has these things here and there's little cutouts where this sits in the circuit board. So this should be all right I guess. Now before we put the top case and the keyboard in the key needs to cure. So we're going to have a look at that. And also my little badge here came off uh, during washing this. It still has some sticky tape on it, but I think I'm just going to add some very tiny sticky tape here from my stash, which is 3M good quality sticky tape. Here, remove the top layer here. And then this should hold in place nicely again. Yeah, looks great. <laughs> At least that worked. So here we are with our missing tooth. Yeah, it kind of works. It's protruding a tiny bit more than uh, it should. Let's try to circumvent that. I'm not sure, but this is, I'm, I'm not sure. I don't want to re risk breaking it again. It's at a bit of an angle, I guess. Yeah, it's good enough for me. Let's move on. This would be a good time to uh, put the disk drive into the case. Unfortunately, there are loose parts in here now uh, because one of the heads got knocked loose. I think the glue didn't ha hold up the lower head is loose so we're going to have to find a workaround for that. I think it's not going to be for this video. I mean we have the CF card in there and I'm going to come up with a solution of uh, either fixing this which should be rather impossible. I don't know if I knocked the head off or if, if it was loose before but it's definitely loose and that means this is absolutely non-functional non and non-trivial to repair even if it worked before the flooding and after the cleaning that I did. It doesn't look great anyway so probably it's time for a new drive or we're going to find a way to put a GoTag in there that is uh, suitable. We're going to see but that's not for this video. I'm just going to leave the drive out for now. I have something else though that I want to try. This is a coprocessor card. A Phase 5 product from 1993 with a FPO floating point unit on there which is a coprocessor for the main processor and it also has a RAM expansion on here I think. I guess it's 8 megabytes but I'm not quite sure. I'm just going to stick this in there after cleaning. I did meticulous cleaning on this with some alcohol. I'm going to spray some contact cleaner into the contacts again and see if this works. This came with the dirty Amiga from the flooded basement. I have no idea if this works at all or if it ever worked. But we're going to find out, I guess. Yeah, let's just do a function test, I guess, at this point. By the way, my U key just came off again. 
Ugh. So I'm probably going to use a stand-in from the other bad keyboard that I have. The dirty one. I'm just going to wash that and put that in there for now. And the other Amiga 1200 board I have, which I'm going to try to turn into a fully fledged Amiga 1200 again at some point as well. That doesn't need a keyboard at this point because uh, it's not even working. Not even the PCB is working. Whereas this one should. <laughs> I hope it still works. Let's see. With the expansion card that I have no idea if it's working. Let's see what this does when I power it on. It doesn't do anything. Oh, red screen. <laughs> I saw it flashing a red screen there. So possibly it's a good idea to remove this expansion card and have a look at that in another video. Hope this still works now without the expansion card. Yep, the hard disk light just came on. That's a good sign, I guess. Yay! Okay, the Amiga still works. That's a good sign. Whew. Okay, so the expansion card definitely is bad. This might need a jumper setting. We are going to figure that out in another video. So yeah, the Amiga test kit boots fine. So I think the Amiga is still good. Uh, we just need a disk drive for it. So this turns out to be not quite as satisfying as I thought it would be, but still the Amiga works again and uh, we retrobrite the case. We have a CF card in there. So far so good. Let's see. I am going to have to do some more work on this, uh, which is kind of, it it's, was to be expected. So I'm just going to put the trapdoor back in. We're going to put the keyboard in. We are going to need the little clip that goes on the keyboard connector here from the other non-working boards. I'm just going to steal that from there. I think it just pulls off. And then we should be able to attach a keyboard to this. After we put the new old key in there, which is a tiny bit more yellow than the rest of them, so nothing's quite perfect, but it's still going to be better than just a bare board. So the keyboard clip just sits in here like so. Yep, that works. It just clips on basically. This should fit in here perfectly, it does. Oh, I forgot the LEDs, but let's put the key in. This is the key, it's very yellow. Let's put that in while we're at it. This is a, a good key. Yeah, it looks kind of yellow in comparison, but it's an A1200 key, so we could retrobrite this to match the others at least. Maybe I'm going to do that in the future, but at least that holds in place. I'm going to try to fix the uh, other keycap in some way. I don't know how yet. Maybe that's going to be fixable after all. Now it's at least it's a, a working keyboard again. Uh, we're going to have to put the LED assembly in the top case, I think. So this is our LED assembly and this goes in here like so, I believe. And I have the original screws for that, thankfully. This should just screw on there. We now have LEDs, yeah. And then this goes through the keyboard, through the hole here and plugs into the main board. Because you have to do some cable routing here. Yeah, we have an Amiga 1200. <laughs> not really much I can show you. I'm not going to put the screws back in because we are going to have to go back in and put a drive in eventually. Plus I don't have the original case screws. So I'm going to have to find some replacements for that, but that's just uh, screws on the back side here. So that's nothing to worry too much about. Should be regular size screws. Let's see if this powers on still and if we, the LEDs work. Okay, power LED works, hard disk LED. Looking for a disk drive, which it doesn't find. And the hard disk LED flashes away, nice. Yeah, so this is where we are. It does somewhat work. It needs some kind of disk drive. This is our status. We are going to have to do some more work, or I am going to have to do some more work, but so far I'm pretty satisfied. Let's see if our reset works. Yep, reset works. 
So we can reset this. That's a good thing. So the keyboard connection should be all right. The keyboard was working fine. It was just a bit yellow. So I guess it still works fine, probably. So there's going to be more episodes about this particular Amiga 1200 eventually. Yeah, at this point I'm going to have to end this video because I have to either fix this drive or find a replacement for it. Maybe fix this expansion card. Maybe it might just be an issue with uh, some jumpers that are on here or a missing clock crystal that I just noticed. So I'm going to have to look that up and figure that out eventually. Other than that, I think my repaired board still works. We have a slightly yellowed but way better than it was case. Uh, the keyboard is missing one original key, but I found a replacement for that. Maybe I'm going to go with new keycaps, new case at some point. These are available, as I said. Yeah, I think that's it for today. Hope this was informative and maybe a bit entertaining or at least relaxing to watch. Thank you for your time. Special thanks to my supporters on Patreon and Ko-fi and the YouTube channel memberships page. Thank you again, Neil, for donating this board to me. Thanks everybody for your subscriptions, for your comments and your sharing of my videos. Hope to see you again on this channel sometime. I'm Jan Beta. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.